All righty, good morning. Um, welcome to the update on OpenStack networking, um, formerly Quantum. Um, so, uh, first thing I want to do, um, how many members of the core development team are actually here? Stand up, raise your hand. Stand up, well, Young and Dan are hiding on the floor. <laughs> Anybody else here? All right. Um, you know, they're all coding? Good. Uh, my name is Mark McLean. I work for DreamHost, uh, and I'm the incoming uh, project technical lead. I want to give a huge thanks to Dan, who's the outgoing uh, PTL. Uh, Dan is, was the original PTL for uh, OpenStack Networking and has left some extremely large shoes to fill. So <laughs> thanks again, Dan. Um, just real quick, if you're not really familiar with um, Quantum or OpenStack Networking, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we, Quantum was really designed to solve several challenges in the cloud, including um, high-density multi-tenancy. Um, VLANs can have trouble scaling depending on your deployment, on-demand provisioning. Um, traditional networking solutions have interfaces designed for manual configuration, but when you're doing on-demand, they don't work so well. Also need a place to you know, move workloads around and, and where capacity exists. And the IP state, you know, tied to a particular location. Tackling these challenges, the vendors have come up with several different solutions: network virtualization, pick your tunneling technology, other types of technologies. Question marks because vendors are always coming up with new and new and innovative ways to solve these challenges. So, what is really OpenStack networking? It's really just the collection of APIs to allow you to access that networking technology. So, similar to how the compute API allows you to interact with the underlying hypervisor, be it Libvirt, um, you know, KVM, then OpenStack networking is the same thing. You have OBS plugin, we have plugins for um, Linux Bridge, we also have several <coughs> vendor plugins. So a real quick brief history of uh, OpenStack networking. It was incubated during the Essex timeframe, during Folsom it was integrated in the core where we added uh, resources for L2 um, networks, added um, IP address management, DHCP. In Grizzly, um, we got a lot accomplished. We closed 44 blueprints, uh, fixed 386 bugs. Some were bugs that existed before in Folsom, and some were bugs we created while we were building Grizzly. So, but the team was really busy and, and accomplished a lot. So let's talk a little bit about what's new. One of the biggest things and one of the biggest pain points in Folsom was metadata. Uh, if you deployed metadata with overlapping our um, IP address ranges, a lot of um, folks will deploy using RFC 1918 space. You couldn't originally overlap them or you had to go through a lot of hoops. So one of the things we did is simplify the configuration with over overlapping IP. You start up a metadata agent and it will work um, for you with very little configuration other than pointing it at Nova. It supports overlapping IPs and also supports Non-routed networks um, in some in certain architectures, uh, maybe your database tier still needs metadata services, but you don't want it routable to the outside internet. We added security groups. Uh, the concept existed before Nova, but we brought them into Quantum. They support overlapping IPs, which Nova did not before. Also, they handle mul VMs with multiple NICs, so that you can apply security groups to different interfaces for different requirements. <coughs> Also, we added both ingress and egress rules. Previously in Nova, you were only allowed egress rules. Now you have ingress. Also, IPv6 matching. So one of the things we've been doing is we've been adding features into Quantum is improving the IPv6 support. One of the benefits of adding security groups in OpenStack networking is that the plugins can offload the processing. Uh, previously in Nova, it was done via IP tables. Now, where the infrastructure exists within the plugin, they can apply the rules much higher up. Load balancing was another one of the big features that we added in Grizzly. Uh, what we developed is a load balancing API model. Um, it was a consortium of vendors and community members that really worked hard um, during the cycle to develop this model. It's a pluggable framework. So you have the API on the front end, but then you have the ability on the back end to have multiple vendors can support that API and deployers can choose the solution which is appropriate um, for their deployment. 
Also reference, one of the things we did to make sure the API was usable and to get kind of give the community a sense of how the service works is we developed a reference, reference implementation with, a, with HA proxy. One of the things you'll see, we'll talk a little bit in Havana, is that we're gonna continue working on this. We also added five new plugins um, during Grizzly. Uh, Big Switch, Brocade, Hyper-V, Metacura, Plum Grid. Ooh, it says Plum Grid, should say Plum Grid, sorry. Um, one, <laughs> I apologize to Edgar, wherever he is. So, one of the cool things about adding five new uh, plugins is it really speaks to the vendor support of OpenStack networking, the excitement around it, that, that you have so many vendors wanting to uh, support the framework. So it's kind of really cool to see that. So now with the new five, with the five plugins, Quantum now has 11 plugins that gives you a, a rich choice um, to choose from. Other things that also we worked on during um, Grizzly is improvement in, in Horizon. Um, there's a core team member who's core in both Horizon and Quantum who actually has worked to kind of bridge and improve these coverage gaps. One of the things that we improved is the ability to manage routers within Horizon Interface, um, give a graphical view of the topology, specifying multiple uh, NICs when booting a VM, and load balancer control. So I think other folks may have shown this, and you may have seen this elsewhere, because uh, it was in the keynote the other day, but is the ability to visualize the network topology. Um, sometimes when you're just creating or pointing and clicking or using the CLI, it's kind of hard to see how the networks are interconnected without kind of building that mental model. And this topology map really gives you a, a clear view and one shot to kind of understand what's going on in the tenant. The other thing that's new in Grizzly is you can select which NICs you're attaching to an instance. Previously in Folsom, if you booted it, it got every network you owned in some order. Right? So now you can actually choose which NICs get booted and you don't have to do discovery to figure out which networks are attached where. Other features that we added is multiple network node support. Um, in Folsom, you could have DHCP services and L3 services, but they all ran on one host for all tenants. Not very scalable and not very fault tolerant. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we've been working on is trying to spread that load out so you can have multiple network nodes, you can have DHCP services run for tenants on different nodes so that you can kind of limit faults and failures. XML API, uh, previously the quantum API was JSON only. Um, did a lot of work on making it XML, so now there's, we have XML and JSON with full parity. We've also added pagination support, so if you're pulling down large data sets, you don't have to get everything at once, you can actually page through it. We've also worked on adding a seamless upgrade path in the database from Folsom to Grizzly. Um, prior to that, with Essex to Folsom, because of the number of changes, there wasn't an upgrade path without doing some manual work, but one of the community projects was making sure that this was seamless. So the real question is what's gonna be in Havana? The quantum team has been meeting for the last three days. I'm gonna do a little bit of you know, um, fortune telling, future prediction. The team's still working out some of the blueprints um, and we'll still be over the next you know, two weeks or so kind of hammering out exactly what the roadmap's gonna look like. But there are a couple of themes if you look over, over our project track. Um, <coughs> what's going to be in Havana. Services was a really big theme. Um, and probably the biggest three were firewall and adding real, security groups give you one level of protection, it allows you to protect the host, but firewalls really give you the ability to protect the network and apply security rules and apply filtering rules to network traffic. So a group of um, members, of, members of the quantum community came together, uh, really spent a lot of time before the summit hammering out what the model and APIs would look like, and has really got a jump start into getting this, fi this feature implemented in Havana. Another one of the services, as I mentioned in Grizzly, we worked on load balancing. During Havana, we're going to keep working on load balancing. Um, it, there's a lot of different features that we can support and expose, and so we're gonna continue uh, with the load balancing vendors in the community to expand that out, to integrate more plugins from the vendors, because as I said earlier, we only had a reference implementation from HA Proxy. Uh, speaking with several of the vendors, they've already been working on implementations to include uh, for OpenStack networking for load balancing service. And the last one is VPN. Uh, VPN is probably one of the trickier ones because there's so many deployment use cases, 
but as a community, there needs to be a VPN story for OpenStack networking, and so our team's working on starting that progress to bring it. So at the end of Havana, will we have full feature enterprise VPN? Probably not, but we'll have an implementation, an API that the community can then begin to build around. Other, other features that are coming in Havana is improved IPv6 support. Um, several, com several companies in the community want to, make want to make IPv6 and quantum a better experience um, because they have very large deployments, they have very large IP6 deployments and need it, uh, quantum to work seamlessly for business cases and use cases, both private and um, public clouds have this. So one of the things you'll see, we didn't have any sessions on it, but you'll see a community of vendors and uh, folks working on the mailing list to make IPv6 um, a very pleasant experience after Havana. Another one is you'll see improved bare metal support. Um, you have folks who are doing OpenStack and OpenStack and, one of the and using quantum to help facilitate the networking. So you'll also see uh, improvements for SO SRIOV. An updated client library to make writing applications and tooling that interact with quantum easier. And more vendor plugins. Um, been in discussions with three or four vendors who mentioned and asked how they can get their plugins in for Havana. So expect to see some announcements over the next couple weeks and months. A couple community initiatives we're working on is database profiling at scale. Um, different deployments have different scale um, characteristics and so there are folks within the community making sure that the database queries are as efficient and run as fast as possible. Also improving testing, which at the end of the day results in a better release um, and makes our product better. And exploring Nova Net migration paths. Right now, today, there's not a story if you deploy Nova Network and want to upgrade to Quantum. Um, so the community's looking into what those paths look like and how, you know, how we can facilitate that, whether it's automated, whether there's a different story. We had discussions about that. Another one of the things tied in with that is the Nova teams and the quantum teams are working together to kind of improve that integration experience between the two. So lastly, uh, skip time. So lastly, I want to say is the quantum community, like I said, we've been growing with vendors um, and plugins. We added five new plugins, but the team also developers has grown. At the end of the Folsom release, quantum had, a prox had about 100 developers who contributed, core, uh, contributed code. In the last six months, uh, Quantum now has, is up to 150 developers, which means 50 new developers in six months. So we doubled our number of con our contributors in the last project cycle, which is really, um, which is really exciting as, as a team lead to see all the vendors who are contributing, the community members who are contributing, and the community growing. So from that standpoint, it's exciting going into Havana, and I'm pretty excited about the things that are coming up. If you want more information on what's in Quantum, um, the manuals are up to date. The team's been really working hard on making sure the docs are there. You can go to the docs project and go to the OpenStack um, networking manual. Any questions? Yes. Have you looked at uh, load balancing deployment over hybrid cloud and those types of use cases? Uh, we have load balancing over hybrid clouds. Right now, I don't believe the team has looked at that. That's something that we'll probably look at in a later release, if possibility. The one thing is what we're concentrating on now is making sure that we have in a single cloud deployment a good load balancing story. And one of those things is just kind of been exploring the space and making sure that the community and the vendors understand how, how it should interact. Thanks. Will quantum be the default network type in Havana, and will Nova Network be supported? So the question is, is will uh, quantum be the, net the default network type in Havana, and will Nova Network be supported? Um, to answer your second question, Nova Network will be supported for a few more releases at least. Um, the teams met this morning um, to figure out how we can make it possible for OpenStack networking to be the default um, network implementation in OpenStack. Both teams are committed to making it happen, so it's just a matter of getting the timelines and also making sure that the documentation and the supporting um, infrastructure around it is there. I mean, if you want to deploy 
quantum today, it works. It, it's not to say don't. It's just right now most communities have been used to deploying Nova networking, so that's what we're working to update. Yes. So um, uh, this is just an observation on the way the quantum API is going. Um, the original API that Dan did was really conceptually very simple. And it seems to be getting more and more complicated. An example of this is flow steering. Um, many of the things involved in the flow steering um, seem like they would be more appropriate at the orchestration layer. Um, I think some of this is um, made worse by the fact that people are using um, names for like physical objects for the ritual. I mean, if you think about it in the early 90s with object-oriented programming, if people had said um, structs with function pointers, um, if, you know, there probably wouldn't have been much interest in object-oriented programming, but it, it, it caused a revolution in the way programming was working. And I think there's a potential for that to happen with networking, but if we call something a router or a firewall, I think you know, maybe there's a problem. At any rate, I think um, there needs to be some thinking about how to simplify things, especially with things like flow steering and uh, services, because um, if, if some of the functions from orchestration start creeping into the networking layer, I think it's gonna make it too complicated. I would agree. I mean, one of the challenges of any API is trying to balance the simplicity and complexity. The other issue, um, and if you sat in any of the design summit sessions with Quantum, is there's always a um, there's always some difficulty in coming up with the appropriate terminology to represent what a logical device should be called, what it does, and then actually what's the physical implementation of that device, whether it's one device, two devices, or what happens on the back end. And and some of those discussions uh, really take a little bit of hammering out trying to figure out how we can do it. Um, and I would agree that we want to make sure that the making OpenStack networking simple and easy to deploy is one of the goals of the team. We actually held a session on that, trying to figure out ways that we could make it easier to understand both from a tenant perspective and from a deployer's perspective. <coughs> yes? Same default configuration. A same default configuration. <laughs> So if you didn't hear what Dan said, one of the, the main outcome of making quantum simpler was a same default configuration that if you went installed and you hit go, it did the right thing. With you know, there's always going to be a few parameters you have to tweak. There you just can't get around it. You have to tell it where the database lives, for instance. Yes. What is quantum by default in the future? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, what is quantum going to be called in the future? Its official name will always be OpenStack Networking. Um, there, there's actually a session this afternoon to discuss how code names in OpenStack in general work. So I don't know that answer. Yeah? Uh, can you explain the future of Solar Panel before the product launch? Currently in Havana, there are no plans to support dynamic routing, product, routing protocols. Um, None of the com community really made a big push for it. I do know there's folks who are privately have been experimenting with ways to add it in, but nothing has kind of bubbled up the community level for a greater, um, you know, kind of a greater push. Yes? So those uh, service and management practitioners that are new, uh, the goal is just the API, or how are you going to do it? Uh, the goal with the services is kind of two-pronged. One, we need to have an API. Um, that works and the community understands, but we also need to have a reference implementation and using open source software that uh, the community can then use to test the API, discover how the service works. Also, it provides a test bed for the vendors to kind of um, make sure that their implementations are compliant with the API. I mean, that will apply to load balancing, firewall, and VPNs. Is this make, there, there needs to be a, a open source story for each of those. Kind of similarly, uh, if you look at the core plugins of Quantum, we have the Linux Bridge plugin and we have the OVS plugin, so that way there's an open source implementation of, of our API and that you can test and try.
So currently right now, if you define a network with a, in a flat network deployment um, that's accessible to all tenants, if you spin up an instance and it's shared, they should get uh, a port on that network. Yeah, currently, if you call Nova Boot without any NIC association, you get the you get the any networks available to the tenant. What, what would happen if Nova Network has a bunch of networks to run, and so if you had a bunch of networks, then you could get it as one. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you. Oh wait, <laughs> the lights are blinding. Yes. Is service chain going to be in, in Havana? Um, the core team, that's one of the items we're going to discuss as a core team is how that, what that roadmap looks like. Um, so when I said predicting a future is a little tricky, that's one of those items. I don't know whether it's gonna be Havana or something that's a longer term initiative that maybe we iterate over longer than a single cycle. All right. Now I think we're really done. <laughs>